New York. It's meant to be the city that never sleeps, but when a strange illness struck the city in the summer of 1999, almost everyone was caught napping. Across the five boroughs of New York City, thousands of wild birds were dropping out of the sky. In Queens, doctors reported a series of patients suffering encephalitis, swelling of the brain. And in the Bronx, endangered species at the world-renowned zoo were dying. Uh, we had a Chilean flamingo that died. A uh, guane cormorant that was swimming abnormally um, died. Uh, the next day, a bald eagle that had been in our collection for 26 years, she was our mascot. Head tremors, boom, an hour later, she died. In laboratories across the United States, scientists work frantically to discover the cause of the mysterious illness. Um, a novel diagnostic test was created that documented that this was, in fact, West Nile virus. West Nile virus is transmitted by mosquitoes and was first identified in Africa, hence the name. New York was the first ever outbreak of West Nile on the American continent. How it got here is still a mystery. It was, uh, it was incredibly intense and exciting. Beepers, cell phones, calling each other at 11 o'clock at night. Oh, this was scientific, uh, yeah, this was quite a discovery. West Nile virus is one of a group of viruses which can attack the central nervous system, leading to encephalitis. There's no cure. Generally, it'll affect the brain or the coverings of the brain and the spinal cord. Patients will have trouble breathing and they may need to go on a respirator. Typically, it's not direct invasion from the disease that's causing the death. It may be some of the secondary complications. Seven people died in the 1999 outbreak. Because of the scare surrounding it, West Nile virus is now the focus of a major public health campaign. And the main target of that campaign is the mosquito. Dr. Varuni Kula Sakera coordinates the citywide mosquito monitoring and control program for the New York Department of Health. Yeah, the seawater is fine. Here in Manhattan, sewers are an important breeding ground. Oh, there are a lot of mosquitoes here. Traps tell scientists when mosquito numbers are rising and when spraying of standing water to kill mosquito larvae should start. Mosquito numbers peak in summer and drop drastically during the winter. The hopes that the cold weather might kill off all the infected mosquitoes and eradicate the disease for good proved optimistic. In 2000, West Nile virus returned and claimed another two lives. Today, Dr. Kula Sakera is visiting the epicenter of that outbreak, Staten Island. When people talk about New York City, they only think about the concrete jungle. 35% of Staten Island is uh, wetlands. So there are lots of habitats for mosquitoes. Hey guys, do, I, do you have all your equipment ready? Yeah, we're okay. ready. Right, let's, go. let's go. Staten Island is a main focus for the mosquito monitoring. It's uniquely hospitable to mosquitoes. So this water basically comes from all the washing machines because in Staten Island there are no sewers. So all the people just release their water onto the streets and there are puddles and that's the main mosquito breeding area. Monitoring like this is carried out across no, New York and neighboring states by a small army of scientists and student oh, volunteers. Oh yes, that's yeah. a mosquito larva. Samples are taken away for analysis to see if the mosquitoes are infected with the virus. At Staten Island's main hospital, Dr. Jordan Glazer dealt with cases from the most recent outbreak. This past year, the birds started dying in uh, Staten Island, and we had 10 cases of uh, West Nile uh, on the island. The majority of them were managed at our hospital. Um, unfortunately, one of uh, those 10 people passed away. Serious cases are thankfully rare. Most people recover from infection without any symptoms at all. But if the infection spreads to the brain, it can cause paralysis with potentially fatal consequences. People over 50 and those with weakened immune systems are most at risk. The 2000 outbreak, like the first outbreak the year before, was closely monitored by federal officials from the Centers for Disease Control here in Fort Collins, Colorado. This is a map that shows Long Island and the five boroughs in New York City. Here, shown by the yellow dots, were the human 
cases of West Nile encephalitis that occurred in 1999. The red squares are actually the uh, positive mosquito pools uh, that were found. The red triangles are West Nile infected birds that were turned in at the end of 1999. West Nile has already been reported from neighboring states. The fear is that West Nile virus could spread right across the U.S. We have become somewhat complacent about mosquito-borne viral illnesses because they have not been a problem for a number of years. Uh, but one of our big concerns is the potential for this virus to become widespread and involve many, um, many states and, and many people. Which is why colleagues at CDC Fort Collins are working on a vaccine. In a high-security lab, they extract the virus from infected mosquitoes and use the virus's own DNA to attack it. Dr. Jeffrey Chang was already working on a DNA vaccine for a related disease, Japanese encephalitis. Producing a vaccine for West Nile just meant substituting a different bit of DNA. We developed a model, used some different, uh, similar but different virus, and boom, it's work. As DNA vaccines haven't yet been approved for use in humans, the team at CDC are working with another animal susceptible to West Nile, and very common in Colorado the horse. Blood samples taken after vaccinating the animals showed that they had antibodies to West Nile and sure enough when exposed to the virus they didn't get the disease. Okay. Horses disease behave very similar to human. If the vaccine can prevent West Nile infection in horse that could potentially also be used as a human vaccine. A human vaccine is still years away, and mosquito control remains the first line of defense. New York and the rest of America remain on high alert.